Welcome back. Well, we're, uh, spring is uh, getting underway and everybody's biting at the bit to get outside into their gardens. We're excited to see things turn green and all the flowers pop up. And there's been lots of talk of native plants. Um, we've had lots of guests and, and so we've been hearing a lot about that. We have Deb Lewis here. She is the co-founder of the Iowa Native Plant Society. And uh, welcome. Thank welcome, you. Welcome. Uh, I'm excited just that there is such a thing as the Iowa Native Plant Society because I think it's important for all of us to keep learning and the more we know the better. Um, to, uh, talk about just how the society got started because you're the co-founder yes, of that. Yes, that was back in 1995 and a graduate student at Iowa State and I um, had some experience with Native Plant Societies in other states and I was sort of the dreamer and he was the go-getter. And <laughs> <laughs> so when I mentioned it, he said, let's do it. And we started with a series of hikes or field trips okay. across the state to go out and actually see wildflowers and invite people to come and, and learn something about them or just even if they were already knowledgeable, just to enjoy being out, seeing them uh, in some of Iowa's nicest places across the state. And uh, while we were th doing that, we would ask whether they were interested in a native plant society, and they um, often said yes. And so by October, we were able to get it organized and have uh, officers and um, sen start sending out newsletters and all of that you kind of stuff. You have a beautiful stuff. newsletter, very robust with lots of great information <laughs> in it. Um, how, how do people become a part of, is this for anybody? Is this just for you know plant enthusiasts, gardeners? Well, anybody who enjoys uh, the outdoors or plants or nature in general uh, certainly is welcome to join us. Uh, we have folks at all levels of knowledge, so it isn't just an academic thing. It's um, while well, we have some people who are, are extremely um, well trained mm -hmm. and all we have even contributors to our newsletter who um, just do articles about what they have observed and the um, enjoyment that they take from plants, sometimes even writing poetry or submitting photographs or things like that. Deb, what first drew you to wildflowers like this and your love of them? <laughs> um, I was a, an undergraduate student at Arkansas Tech after okay. growing up on a farm, so I already had some experience with being outdoors and nature, sure. and my mom, of course, loved you know, planting flowers and things like that. But uh, at Arkansas Tech, um, I had a wonderful professor who uh, taught the botany classes. Mm -hmm. And once I had one of his classes, I switched from studying animals to studying plants. Okay. And that was your, that's where the love affair started. That's where the love <laughs> affair started, yes. Yeah. Now, you know, <laughs> A very have, dynamic professor. Now, how have things blossomed uh, since the society began? Well, we have grown somewhat in our membership, and we have added a small grants program where we support projects uh, of various kinds, one of which involves uh, youth as one of the requirements for getting the funding. And um, we have uh, a website. We've got um, just information that uh, is available through brochures and things like that. So it's a... What are, like I said, everybody's really excited to um, see things start to pop up. I know yes. that's, I love going out in the yard and seeing things that are starting to emerge. There's some really um, interesting spring natives that yes. are going to be popping up soon that you kind of wanted to highlight and talk about for people to keep their eye out for. Yes, um, there is a series of wildflower guides, and these are arranged by um, the time of year that they come into bloom. Okay. And so the first photographs in the series of three on woodlands, wetlands, and the tall grass prairie um, have uh, a, a seasonal spread of okay. photographs and information about these plants. And so uh, Dr. Tom Rosberg here at, at Drake University okay. was involved in creating the second edition of these volumes. Many of his photographs and some of his information is included in these. Which is the, the past we, flower mm -hmm. that we were just looking at. They that's were saying that right. correct? That's past correct. Flower? The past okay. flower on our prairies is the first uh, wildflower on the prairies to come into bloom. And okay. when, when will that be happening? It could be now. It could be uh, now. So yes. any time it could be any time. Up. That's right. Okay. So and I, is that the, is that the color that we see too, or 
I'm sorry. Is that, that the same one one general color, or are they variety different they, colors? They kind of range from pale pink to that sort of purpley pink color. Okay. okay. And uh, they're on our some of our drier prairies in the northern two thirds of the state. Now that doesn't sound this pleasant. One. There, skunk cabbage. Skunk cabbage is kind of stinky. It's related to the corpse flower. <laughs> oh, it is really. Uh, yeah. And we're all familiar <laughs> with that is, because yeah. thanks to the uh, botanical center. It, right. Yeah. And. Uh, so it blooms in our wetlands uh, is the first thing out. We have very few sites for this one in the state, but it is interesting because it is, uh, you know, as a pest flower. I mean, uh, excuse me, here's the snow trillium and the uh, snow trillium is the first for our woodlands. Okay. And it's found across Iowa, even though we're close to the western edge for its native range. And when will we start seeing those plants then? They're already blooming. They're already blooming now. Yes. Oh, okay. wow. I've got some that I planted at my house as kind of indicators of when they start to bloom and mine are just out as of yesterday. There you go. Perfect timing. Yeah. Yes. That, now people want to incorporate some wildflowers maybe into what they have. Some of their garden areas and yes. they have a, like a rock area and they say it'd be nice to have some wildflowers popping up through here. Uh, what's the, the, the best method that you think is to get the wildflowers incorporated into your landscape? Well, sometimes it's hard to get them started from seed. Some things seed in readily, but uh, we encourage people, of course, to uh, see whether they can find wildflowers at uh, plant sales, at uh, garden centers, and so put they do those have them at garden centers occasionally. At some, yes, they do. Okay. And um, and the thing about them, once they once you plant them and they get started, then you're probably pretty good to go for a while, aren't you? That's right, because yeah. these are native to our climate and uh, to our soil conditions, and so they usually do very well. I like the fact you don't have to keep replanting them. Exactly, they keep coming back time and time exactly. again. Exactly, yeah. and because that, yes. that's a big been a big thing, mm -hmm. just the importance of them in our own yet backyards. And do you guys do you, do you kind of help educate people on? the importance of them and trying to, you know, protect them and maybe encourage them in our own yards? We do. Uh, the wildflowers, of course, attract our native pollinators, and so the, it's very helpful to our insects. People, of course, think about milkweeds and mm -hmm. the monarch butterflies, but even the, the small bees and other uh, things that we might not even really notice unless we look closely. Uh, th th they can find a home on our native wildflowers. So and you would suggest having a patch of wildflowers, whatever landscape you might happen to have. Yes, if you can incorporate some some wildflowers even among your uh, cult the typical cultivated plants, that's right. a good thing. Lou's hoping to, he's, he should have a whole backyard full of uh, milkweed. That would love that. Would that. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, a real <laughs> resting spot for the migrating monarchs. Yes. yes. You have um, some events coming up. Uh, May is Wildflower um, Month for Iowa, correct? That's correct. And I know you had some events that you kind of wanted to talk about and some of the the things that maybe if you they want to participate to take along if you're going to go out on one of these nature hikes with you guys and talk about a few of those that you want to highlight. Well, the um, Governor Reynolds and the previous governors over the last uh, decade or more have signed a proclamation declaring May as Iowa Wildflower Month. Nice. And on our website, we will have a calendar of all of the activities. Mm -hmm. And typically, we're, of course, focusing on the Iowa Native Plant Society's activities. But for the month of May, we include all of those from county conservation boards and uh, the Iowa Prairie Network, with whom we work very closely, and other organizations to make the, all of that information available as good sites for getting out and doing some exploring to see what we have. Yeah, and you have some coming up here over the next few weeks, too, in different areas as well. That's right. Like. If you go to the calendar on the Iowa Native Plant Society website, which is just iowanativeplants.org, mm -hmm. okay. uh, you can find uh, the calendar and see what's coming up. And if the public is invited. There's no charge for at least the Iowa Native Plant Society's field trips or those of lots of other organizations as well and um, just encourage people to get out and explore with us to see what we have. Oh, thank you very much. IowaNativePlants.org. Yeah, cool. Go you sign up for their newsletter. It's chock full of great information. Check out their calendar uh, and be a part of the Iowa Native Plant Society. All right, we have to ask Deb, okay, is it, is it herb or is it herb? Okay, wh which is the <laughs> correct pronunciation? Herb or herb? It is herbs. Herb. But I work in the herbarium. <laughs> okay. yeah, we got confused. So much for that. Oh, there you go. I thought it was a good idea. Okay. Stay tuned. Chance <laughs>